Hey guys, it's Lindsay. Welcome back to my channel. So the infinity bracelet is back and that is because we're doing some Avengers makeup. So I had a couple people tag me in this collection uh, when the kind of sneak peek randomly went out. I think it was like the day before the, dro the collection dropped on Ulta's website. But this is an actual official Ulta times Marvel makeup collection. I was really on the fence about buying any of this. I figured maybe I'd pick up a lip product or definitely a makeup bag because I mean, can we just look at how beautiful this makeup bag is? But when I went onto the website, everything for Ulta's brand was buy two, get two free. And their prices are already really good to begin with. So I figured why not just grab a good chunk of the collection and that way I could see if it's any good, let you guys know if it's any good. And either way, you guys know I'm such a, like a Marvel fan, so it's a collector's thing for me. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'll show you guys what I got and I'll tell you prices and everything. I did check their website and it does still have the buy two, get two free going on. I honestly don't know if they honor that in stores, but I love ordering from Ulta's website. They are always pack everything really securely. It's not like Sephora where it's just like some paper and your palette's end up broken nine times out of 10. Um, but yeah, so I ordered mine online just so that I could get everything I wanted and I can kind of play around with putting things in the cart and removing things and seeing what my total ended up with. That's usually the way I shop and over shop. So let's start out with the makeup bag since that's the first thing that you guys are seeing. So they had three different makeup bag styles. This is the one that I chose to get. It's got a pretty good size. It unzips all the way so you can fit a good bit in here. I really like that plus I love Captain Marvel so <laughs> um, I really like this one but they had some other really good ones too. So this particular makeup bag retails for $12 and like I said they do have um, two other styles, larger styles. So next up let's talk about the two palettes in the collection. Obviously I picked up both of them. I, I'm not super thrilled on like this packaging design this kind of like watercolor splatter look. I like the way it looks on here because you've got this kind of splatter, but then you still have the really vibrant colors that kind of make up the characters. So I don't know why they didn't translate something like that, like an image like that to this, maybe having the characters in like a watercolor splatter on these palettes. I think that would have been really awesome. But instead we get these really boring, <laughs> really boring palettes that just say some words on it. Cause I mean, really, this doesn't really scream Marvel when you just glance at it, but. So let's get into the palette first. So the palette retails for $20. Um, so this is what, so like this part I'm okay with. I don't understand why this wasn't the design they used for the outside. That screams Avengers. That does not. <laughs> but anyways, so these are the colors. I have already kind of like messed around and swatched them. I had to kind of really dig into this shade. I don't know if I caused it to have a little bit of hard pan, um, but I had to kind of like scratch up some of the top surface to get a good swatch going. So very similar to the Disney Villains collection, I think my biggest complaint here, aside from like the color selection, is the fact that there's not enough mattes here. I really, really hate that there is only one, two, three. Yeah. There are only three mattes here. And these are your only two shades that would even show in the crease. This one, well, why? <laughs> why is that even necessary? So that's really frustrating. At least the Disney one had a bit more options. This kind of irritates me about as much as the Urban Decay Game of Thrones palette irritates me. I wanted that palette so badly and then I found out it only had three mattes in it. I just don't understand that. Again, you can always pull in from outside of your collection, which is probably what I'll do when I use this in the future. I don't really know much about the Ulta formula, um, but like I knew the ColourPop formula, so that's why I didn't mind buying that palette for the shimmers. I never really used Ulta before. So, I mean, I don't know what their quality is like. So, you know, we'll see. The swatches seemed kind of promising, but again, I just don't know how they're gonna translate when you use them with a brush. I'm just a little worried they're gonna come off kind of sheer. Um, I do think there's some really pretty colors in here. Do I necessarily think that they fit the Avengers theme? No, I kind of wish there would have been a bit more vibrancy in the colors. Like, like this is a really pretty color, but I don't know. Some of these just really don't scream Avengers. I think like the green for Smash is the closest thing that really makes me think of an Avengers shade. Um, there are, like I said, there's some pretty colors in here, but it's not really what I would have picked. But you know, I bought it to give it a chance and just because I love Avengers and maybe it'll be awesome. Fingers crossed. So next up we have the highlighter palette. So the highlighter palette retails for $16. Again, you've got that same cover. And again, you've got the really awesome inside that's better than the outside. So you've got four shades here and I'll insert the swatches of those as well. I do like the kind of direction they went in with this highlighter palette. I feel like they've got 
fairly decent tone differences here. Um, this shade right here is, you know, a little bit deeper. I think it would look really pretty on a tan to potentially even a deeper skin tone. Um, it's probably going to be too dark for me, but it might be really pretty as like a bronzy, like a shimmery bronze topper or like using it as an eyeshadow. This shade up here is definitely my favorite just because I like an icier type of highlight, but I definitely could probably wear, I know I can wear this one, I probably could wear that one. So I feel like I can get enough use out of all four of these shades to like not feel bad about purchasing it. So I ended up selecting a few of the lip products because it started with I was just gonna get one and then I kind of wanted two, but then I wanted the makeup bag. So then that meant I could get another item. So in the end, <laughs> I got a few. <laughs> so I purchased two of the lip glosses. They had four different lip glosses. All of the lip products retail for $10. So I got the lip gloss in the shade Cosmic, mostly because I figured I could use this as a topper on top of one of the liquid lipsticks I bought. And then this one is Electrifying, which is like a shimmering pinky color. So again, the lid pretty much matches the inside of the packaging. I don't mind this design as much. I think it's pretty, I think it's cool, whatever, you know. Um, so I'm not as mad at these. <laughs> I mean, it's definitely an interesting direction to go, but I like that you have like all the symbols of the characters on there. And then lastly, I picked up three out of the four liquid lipsticks. I honestly don't remember why I didn't buy the fourth one. I think that I thought it was gonna be too light for me online, but now I'm kind of wondering if it would have worked. So. If I like the formula of these, I might go back and buy it. I've never again tried any of the Ulta lip products, so who knows? Um, but again, these are $10, so I picked up Supercharged, which this is the one that I think would be pretty topped with the lip gloss. And I got Out of This World and Amazed. So these are the three liquid lipsticks. Okay, so I'm just gonna do a quick eye look just to see how some of these shadows perform. I'm probably only gonna use one of the highlighters just because I did swatch them on my hand, so I'm probably just gonna use whatever one that I decide to pick for the look that I go with. Um, but I will swatch all of the lip products on my lips so that you guys can see how those look. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so let's get started. I've already primed my lids with the MAC Paint Pot and I'm gonna jump straight into the shade Supercharged. And I'm just gonna start working that into the crease area. My primer is tacky, so I'm gonna kinda just pat this color down a little bit first. And then I'll blend it upward a bit. And out, of course. Gotta do a little wing. I will say so far, I do like that shade, even though it's really light. Um, it was very soft and easy to blend, so that's a good sign. All right, since I don't have many other options in this palette, I'm gonna jump into Reassemble and I'm gonna add that more directly into the crease to deepen it up. Now, if you really wanted this blue to stand out more, I would say go straight in with this color, like off the bat on top of your tacky primer, but I kind of want this to be a soft blend into the purple, so I didn't do it that way. All right, so back into that purple supercharged shade and just kind of really soften that blue and just hopefully make it a bit prettier. I feel like it's just gotten a little muddy looking. That seems to help a bit. I am gonna cut the crease. Okay, I am gonna add like a little um, darker color on the outer portion, um, so I'm not gonna bother, I'm not gonna cut it out as a wing, but I will be filling it in with something deeper. All right, good enough for now. So I think I'm just gonna go in over the top with my finger. I think that's going to be the easiest way to do this. So let me start with the darker shade first. Um, I'm gonna put Cosmic on the very outer corner. So I'm just gonna pop in and start patting some of that color over the top of the concealer. It does not like the tacky concealer. Let me try to get some of it off. So this is the color I mentioned that I had issues with when I was trying to do my swatches. Um, it was almost like the second I rubbed my finger over it, the pan just completely went hard and shiny and I couldn't really get anything off of it. Um, but once I kind of scratched up some of it with my fingernail, then it worked. So I'm gonna try going in with a brush, a wet brush, see if that helps at all definitely helps and it definitely is a much prettier color when it's wet. Okay, 
So I use a wet brush. <laughs> I'm gonna mix a little bit of reassembled and supercharged together and just kind of pounce it on this outer portion to blend and deepen this outer part. So for the inner part, I really want to use a legend, I think. Either legend or smash. Hmm. I think legend is gonna be better. I don't wanna use both. I wonder if I could get away with both. I'm gonna try to put a little bit of smash right in the center. Okay, I actually kinda like that. That one's much easier to use. It's very soft. I'll go back and kinda like blend over these colors in a second. So then I'm gonna use legend on this inner portion. As much as I can get into, I probably should use my pinky. That one's really pretty too. I'm gonna pop into both of those colors with my wet brush. First is the green on the center and then flip over, I've got the blue on the other side. Just so I can get it up to the cut crease area. And then I'm gonna do a little bit of blending back and forth between the two colors. I really like that a lot actually. And those two go really nicely side by side like that. All right, I'm just gonna kind of clean the brush off with my little knockoff color switch. And then I'm gonna get a little bit of the green smash shade with a little bit of the purple cosmic shade. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this side, kind of work back and forth, blending the purple and green together. There we go. I did kind of want to bring the green over a little bit farther because it originally started off a bit darker than I had anticipated or wanted. Okay, so I feel like those kind of redeemed themselves a little bit. I'm actually pretty happy with the way those shimmers turned out. So let's do something for the bottom lash line. I really want to use this shade right here, Fearless. It's so pretty. So I think I'm just gonna do a wet liner brush for that shade and just line the entire lower lash line. I think I might um, do kind of what I've been doing where I leave that very, very inner part blank and put a brighter shade there just cause it is kind of getting a little bit darker with the purple and everything. So I don't want it to be too dark and heavy. All right, so let's see how this looks as a liner. So it is definitely a really pretty color. I will say though, now that I'm looking at my face really close in this mirror, I have a crap ton of fallout. Um, it looks like it was probably from the blue or green shades. Like when I packed that on, maybe the brush wasn't wet enough. So I'll have to try to wipe that away. For the most part, it looks like the fallout brushed away pretty easily. So that's good. Okay, so I do really like that color on the lower lash line. I'm trying to decide if I wanna tie in the purple shade from the top. I'm gonna take just a little bit of supercharged, the kind of mauve shade from the beginning and just lightly, softly kind of run this underneath it. Nothing too heavy. So I'm using a fluffier brush instead of a pencil brush. Just kind of ties everything together. For the inner corner, I'm gonna use I've Got This on a little fluffy pencil brush and just pop that in the center. See how that, yeah, that's got a nice little glow to it. But I wonder if it would be better if I sprayed it. So I'm just gonna get a little on my brush, give it a little spritz. Let's see, oh yeah. So instead of doing a full on line, I'm just gonna kind of drag a little bit of this color into the center, into the like inner portion of the lower lash line. Uh, when I did the blue shade, I got a little bit down there by mistake. So it's almost like it's mixing and you can kind of see a little bit of that blue underneath it. I think it actually looks kind of pretty. I like to take whatever's left on the liner brush that I use and just give a very subtle, like little tapping of color. It just kind of gives a shadow underneath the brightness. I like it. What should we do for liner? Maybe green? Oh, I know. I think I'll use this shade. Um, this is Laura Mercier Antique Jade. So it is a green, but it's a really dark green. I'm gonna pop this in the waterline. Okay, let's go ahead and pop on a highlighter. I'm gonna do winged liner and lashes off camera. So let me go ahead and do this. That way when we come back, we can just sit through the lip swatches. So I of course want to use this shade right here, which is prepared to be amazed because you guys know, like I said, I like a kind of bright icy highlight. Plus I think it'll go really pretty with this eye look. It's really pretty actually. So that is a really pretty icy glow. Probably put too much on, but. I really don't care. I like highlighter. 
So these days I've really kind of enjoyed going a bit overboard with the highlighter and then I just kind of jump back into like my bronzer or blush brush that I used earlier and kind of buff over the top of it. It kind of just like, I feel like it just melts the color into my skin, the shimmer. Um, but yeah, that's what I've been doing lately and I really like the way that it ends up looking so. That's my tip if you wanna try something like that. Okay, let me do my liner and lashes and mascara off camera. I'll come back and we'll start the lip swatch process. I'll probably just maybe put one on and then just zip through showing you guys the rest of them. All right, so the eyes are done. I just used my LA Splash Live Wire Liner for a really big wing, bigger than I actually intended initially. Um, let's see, Milk Kush Mascara, and then I used my brand new Likely Lashes. This is the style Anxious Angel. I really, really like these. I got all three of them recently. They just came in the mail, so like this is the first time I've had a chance to actually use them. They're super pretty super super pretty and of course you guys know I love Jordi from It's Likely Makeup so I'm all about supporting her. So let's go ahead and dig into the lip products. I will try them on one by one for you guys. We're going to start with the lip glosses for obvious reasons um, and yeah I'm just going to probably like zip through showing them to you. I don't really think I need to show you how they apply because it's just applying lip product but I'll let you know if anything was weird streaky or needed multiple layers so we'll do it that way. Okay, so those are all the lip swatches plus this little bonus combination, which I love. And like I said, this was kind of the whole reason I bought the kind of purple gloss in the first place because I thought it would look really pretty on top of this kind of more purple toned color. They don't look exactly the same when you put them side by side, but they complement each other really nicely. And I just kind of figured this one would be a little too sheer, not quite as opaque as I would want for a matte purple gloss. But when you put it over the top of this, it's beautiful. Or of course you could put it over a lip liner. So. Um, since we just did the lip swatches, let's kind of do a quick little recap of my thoughts on those. Uh, this combination I really like. The glosses themselves, they're nice. I mean, I still personally would put something under them, whether it's a lipstick or a lip liner, because I don't like that weird sheerness where you can kind of see your lip through it. Um, the kind of sparkly-ish pink shade, I like it. It's not too frosty, um, and I think it looked pretty on its own. I still maybe would put like a nude lip lipstick underneath it or something. Um, and they have kind of like a little bit of a subtle vanilla perfume kind of scent to them. I don't know how, to, how else to describe it, but that's what it reminded me of. But overall, they're pretty glosses. Um, the liquid lipsticks are interesting. Um, I feel like sometimes this happens with liquid lipsticks where depending on the shade, the formula can be a little bit different. I feel like the lighter ones are usually a bit easier to put on and they usually feel a bit thinner and I agree with this one. Um, this was Out of This World, which was the main one I wanted to buy in the first place. It's just a really perfect, beautiful, like deep, kind of darkish nude color. Um, I love it on me and it was very comfortable to wear and it really barely came off. Like I kind of gave it a couple minutes to dry before I did the little kiss test and it stayed pretty nicely. So this is a really good like everyday color and I think it would fade really nicely throughout the day. These two, um, let's see, the red one specifically, just seemed to be a little bit trickier of a formula. It was still easy to put on, but I gave it again a couple minutes to dry and when I kissed my hand, a good bit of it came off, which, you know, I've had liquid lipsticks that have done that. It's not the end of the world to me, but it's just something to be aware of. It might still transfer, which means it also might fade a little faster if you're eating and drinking and like you're wearing it at a party. It did also seem like it wasn't quite drying down all the way. Maybe this one just takes even longer to dry down because it still just had like a slight, kind of slight tackiness. Like it didn't feel fully dry and like there was nothing on my lips anymore. You could still kind of feel it there. So again, this one might just need more time to dry down. I'd have to kind of play around with it more to find out. But 
you know, it definitely just seems like it's a little, the formulation's a little bit different. Um, this one actually seemed like it dried down most of the way. Uh, I, of course, didn't get a chance to do a kiss test before I put the lip gloss on top of it. I just wasn't quite thinking about it. But I'll try to give these a little bit more of a wear throughout the weekend, and maybe I can update you guys in like a pinned comment or something. Um, they're $10, it's really not a bad price. I feel like that's kind of the same price as you would find like a L'Oreal or a Maybelline liquid lipstick at the drugstore. And with those, sometimes they transfer and sometimes they don't. So, you know, if you're an Avengers fan or you think these shades are pretty, you might like these. Um, I definitely probably would go with a different red just because I feel like if you're gonna wear red, you want it to stay put and there's probably better reds out there. But I do like these two a lot. And I actually think I might go back and get the lighter one because, you know, 10 bucks, that's not bad. Uh, let's talk about these two guys. So highlighter, I really like the highlighter. Of course, I only used one of them, but that, that's the kind of highlighter that I really enjoy, a really beautiful kind of frosty, blinding kind of glow. Really pretty, I definitely like this formula. So far, I'm happy with it. I will definitely continue using this just to see maybe what the other shades look like and like if it fades and stuff like that. And the eyeshadow palette. Um, so just kind of first impressions off the bat. I have some likes and I have some dislikes. I still really hate the fact that there are only three mattes and really there are only two usable mattes. And I'm not really the biggest fan of how the two combine together. I felt like it started turning a little gray and muddy really quickly. I mean, granted I was mixing this kind of, you know, both cool toned blue and grayish mauvey color. So I don't know what I was expecting, but why would you put them in here if I can't use them together, you know? So that's kind of my complaint there. I will probably use this in tandem with other palettes so that I can get different looks because, I mean, I bought it, I may as well use it. I do really like the shimmer shades that I used. Uh, this one is probably the worst. I don't know if it was just a flaw in mine, but I mean, you can just see how awful <laughs> that shadow pan looks. I mean, I literally, every time I used it, had to scrape up some to be able to get product on. But when I actually got the product on my brush, it worked just fine. All of the shimmers worked much better with a wet brush. Um, the purple one, like really the only way to use that one was with, with a wet brush, at least for mine. The two blue, the blue and green shades, those went on nicely with my finger, but you saw how much more vibrant the color was when I used a wet brush. So I definitely would just recommend doing that from the beginning. Same thing with this inner corner highlight. It's really pretty. And it was a really pretty soft white glow when I first put it on, but just giving that little spritz to the brush really just makes it so much more beautiful. So I definitely recommend wetting your brush. I do feel like it's the type of palette that you're probably gonna have to work with a little extra just to maybe build the colors up a bit more, which might make it a little more user-friendly for just, you know, the average consumer. And it's fine, I don't mind, I don't mind building a palette up, at least the colors worked, you know? So that would just be something to keep in mind. They're pretty colors, but you might have to kind of do a little layering to get the impact that you want. But I'm definitely really happy with the way this look turns out. I think it's really pretty, and I do want to use more of the shades, specifically these two right here. Well, mostly this one, because I think it's just really pretty. Um, so if you guys want to see more from this palette, like in a video, just let me know. Maybe I can do another look with it. Otherwise, if you just want to just like see a look, um, I can try to like do something and just post a picture on Instagram so whatever you guys want to see but yeah that's pretty much all for this collection I do think it's a fun overall collection I definitely think there's so many more directions they could have gone in especially in like an official Marvel capacity so that's a little bit of a bummer <laughs> the best thing out of the entire collection is probably the bags but you know it's nice having these little kind of collector pieces that are something that's licensed to something that I really love so obviously if you guys are a big Marvel and Avengers fan you'll probably still like this collection it is still some kind of like soft everyday wearable type of colors and you know you still got some pops of color but I feel like they're very wearable so I think everybody could really enjoy the products if they wanted to use them if they were interested in buying them and like I said the best part about it is how affordable it is just because the Ulta prices are already affordable and then you get the buy two get two free so I definitely recommend that I don't recommend buying it if you can't get it for that discounted kind of buy two get two free type of sale because that really is a steal because if you were only interested in two lipsticks you could throw in two other lipsticks just for the hell of it for free. So that's all for this video. If you guys enjoyed it, please give it a big thumbs up and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.